Hey everybody, Brian Von Vie here, back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Today, we're coming back to another good fan favorite. Have you ever witnessed a fellow player's quick thinking save the entire party? Part 2. TLDR, I got my entire team into near TPK trouble, but turned the tides back to my favor in such a massive way that... I now have the potential to completely derail the campaign. Oh, what have you done? I'm playing a chaotic neutral bard in my friend's first real DMing experience, but I'm not your typical bard. I also took a level in Rogue. I like doing disruptive things, and I'm a big fan of death metal. Think, um, Eddie Riggs from Brutal Legend if he traded in his axe for Loki's dagger. Haven't tried to seduce anyone just yet, on the contrary, I've been using my bardic skills to study the townsfolk. Also haven't gotten a whole lot of opportunities to use my rogue skills, until this moment. For pretext, we have a rule about unseen servant. To a certain extent, as long as you are within range, you can choose its commands once per round as a bonus action. The servant can also do pretty much anything you can do, with the exception of attacking. From the very beginning of the game, I planned to take this ability so I could have another instrument in what I intended to be a traveling show. But today, it was doing something completely different. In the process of freeing some enslaved elves and rescuing our fighter's dire wolf, we stumbled across an animal fighting ring. I, being an acolyte of the god of freedom, pranks, and mirth, do not like any of this business. I didn't need to be convinced to help these animals escape. It just hadn't occurred to me that these animals had slave collars around their necks, which were controlled by a ring of command around the big bad evil guy's finger. The battle starts off fairly badly. The cage room was shaped sort of like a tic-tac-toe board, three cages across the top, two in the middle of either side, and a massive cage at the bottom. It was a menagerie in there. We're talking an entire family of dire wolves, a few centaurs, crenshaw, griffins, giant eagles, hellhounds, wargs, and perhaps most unsettling of all, a pair of five-headed hydras in the biggest cage. That sounds awful. We entered through the opening in the bottom right side of the map. Because of how narrow this doorway was, I got bottlenecked into the corner for a few turns. I made my first kill of the game against a pit guard with a critical hit after he broke my longsword. But I ended up getting bottlenecked behind everyone else because I rolled eh, pretty badly on initiative. It also helped that I took the sun blade from the guard, but the scuffle cost me half of my HP. We were winning, but we were about to be surrounded. Now, I got the bright idea to use my unseen servant to unlock some of the cells containing the more intelligent creatures. Oh, it worked brilliantly. At first, I used my bardic music to convince the giant eagles and direwolves to fight alongside us. The pit guards were now pinned between our party and the newly freed animals. That is until the big bad evil guy entered the room and used the ring of command to turn all my newly allied creatures against us. Oh god. I immediately started apologizing to my party, realizing that I'd accidentally just set us up for a TPK. We went from pretty easily encircling the guards to being surrounded on all sides. I'd just moved up toward the dire wolf cages to get my servant into range of the griffins, and one of the dire wolves I just freed was right behind me. If I moved, I was dead. If I attacked, oh, I was dead. The only thing I could do now was prepare for my final blow. In desperation, our cleric, who had two blink dogs, grappled the big bad. And that's when it occurred to me. Dean Servant was right there. The big bad entered from right behind him, past him, and never suspected a thing. It was at this moment that I announced my intention, rolled a sleight of hand check, held my breath, and thanks to the grapple disadvantage, slipped the ring of command right off his finger. Oh my god! My unseen servant comes rushing back to me ring in hand. Every animal in the room was now under my control. 
After a round of combat that miraculously didn't kill him, I managed to talk the big bad into surrendering, but unfortunately wasn't able to extract information out of him before he bled out and died. The DM thanked me for preventing a TPK, I got a level up, exactly the loot I wanted, and a brand new master plan. I've since given the ring and all associated animals that could not be freed, lest they destroy everything in their path, to the Adventurer's Guild, with one little caveat. They don't know it's not truly theirs. The ring has secretly been bound to my new belt of returning items, and technically it therefore has never left my possession. The DM knows now I've chosen to give them a test of power. Oh, they'd better do the right thing, or it won't be the slavers they have to fear anymore. I don't intend to break the campaign. I just like having the option. That's, that's brilliant. I love this, and can we get an update as soon as possible? I'm enthralled. In our current campaign, I'm playing an artificer. I had leveled up enough to have my mechanical create a mechanical servant. I asked the DM if I could have a giant ant, and spent the time and the 100 pounds of meteorite iron to make this ant. I really wanted this ant to be cool. My character was obsessed with it. I spent several sessions just working on this construct. I even managed to mount a double crossbow and used my infusions to make it so it never needs reloading. This ant, once I finally finished, was awesome. It was my baby. I named it Antony. Well, mm, sure enough, shit hit the fan in the opening fight of the encounter that would kick off the literal apocalypse. We are facing ice giants and a necromancer. I held my action on my turn. The necromancer goes down and opens his attack with disintegrate aimed at our party's heavy hitting ranger. It was me, the ranger, and Antony in the street. I had just enough time because I held my action to be able to command Antony to take the hit. Rest in peace, Antony. The next battle would push the entire party to our breaking point. Multiple characters were down and bleeding out, but at the end of it, we barely survived. Had Antony not sacrificed himself, the ranger would have been dead. And we would never have been able to do enough damage to win the day. Now, my character was highly upset and hunted the necromancer down and got revenge. Ended up having to rebuild Antony. And now we're all stuck in the past, long story, and Antony is in the present because he can't fly. Not just yet. Pathfinder. Hell yeah. High five. First edition. Rise of the Rune Lords. Ooh, nice. We were fighting Arcus, the ancient white dragon. We had a relatively fluid roster throughout this campaign, but in this particular fight, we had a bard, a barbarian, a chosen one, and a ranger. Oh, the chosen one could fly and was fire focused. The barbarian and ranger managed to mount the dragon to pummel it while it flew through the sky. And the bard cast invisibility and ventriloquism to stay out of the fight while still buffing the party. The fight did not go well. The Chosen One quickly drew aggro, given the fire damage, and nobody could stop the dragon from chewing on him. The Ranger got thrown off and collapsed from the fall damage. The Barbarian realized this was a lost cause and remembered he had a scroll of mass teleportation, gathered his fallen companions, and jumped off the dragon, landing with enough hit points to stay standing while raging but not enough to stay conscious if he stopped. He handed the bard the scroll in his last turn of rage and collapsed as the bard read the scroll with Arcus heading right towards them. The bard managed to get everyone out just in time thanks to the quick thinking of our dwarf barbarian. That's right, you never underestimate a dwarf! Quick thought moment. A nation's military commander and the leader of its inquisition were at odds. We had been working for the king and the commander knew it, but the Inquisition didn't. And one of the commander's soldiers had interfered with the Inquisition tailing us. My wizard went full lawyer, made commander admit that this man broke the law, 
then made the Inquisition gal admit that her Inquisitor was attempting to break the law as well as we were authorized when the event occurred. Were two crimes committed or none? Postponed a civil war until we could prevent it. My best TTRPG moment. Our party was getting ready to go through a portal, but were told to remove all equipment and weaponry before doing so. When we went through the portal, we suddenly found ourselves careening towards a waterfall at level 3. In the party was a Kenku. I swam over to the Kenku and plucked a feather. The component for feather fall is... Dun 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 dun! A small feather! The DM was surprised, the party was surprised, and guess what? We didn't die from being crushed on the rocks. I was playing a Circle of the Shepherd Druid, and our party was fighting a vampire that was kicking our asses because he charmed our barbarian into fighting for him. Now, this was a homebrew campaign, and one of the homebrew creatures that existed in this world was a scarab dragon, which, like in Egyptian mythology, represented the power and rebirth of the sun. My druid just got a new spell after leveling up a previous session ago and I forgot about it until I was scrambling through my character sheet for something, anything, that would hopefully help my party. Because we were not doing well. And I see Summon Draconic Spirit. And I instantly think of the Scarab Dragon, which, according to the DM's homebrew, radiates the power of the sun. You can probably guess what I did then. You turned a vampire to ash, didn't you? Didn't ya? That's what you did. That was the whole plan all along. I actually had a moment like this. I was playing an elemental homebrew 5th edition based world as an artificer goblin. I was given the power to turn something like rock into a cannon. So basically turning anything into anything. I was trapped under a wagon for a while until I had my first interaction with my new teammates. I was freed, but very thirsty. So I go to a lake with our druid and get a drink using a cup. The druid immediately went into the lake, and I made a boat and began to fish. The lake was, eh, not safe. There was a false hydra in the lake, and it hypnotized the druid. I kept fishing, but got pulled in and also kinda got hypnotized, not completely because my intelligence and wisdom were 18 and 16, and it said to me, BAGIN. I should point out that I am what the group considered Bat shit crazy. <laughs> In my best goblin voice, I asked, What do you want? It responded, A weapon of mass destruction. I gave it just what it wanted by turning a rock into a capsule and sand into gunpowder. I made one of those underwater contact mines. I rolled to throw it, hit, and killed it immediately, as well as drained the lake. <laughs> Nearby, my teammates were about to be attacked by tree people when the lake water drained out. And because one of the elements my teammate had was ice powers, he was able to use it to his advantage and killed the trees. TLDR saved my druid from a false hydra with a bomb and somehow saved other teammates in the process. Dragon Heist They are at Gralhund Villa. And because of earlier shenanigans, the Zentarum and Growlhund forces are fighting each other. Uh, basically, the party got their hands on the stone way before they were supposed to. One of my wizards walks in on this fighting and goes, Nope, fireball, and kills every single NPC. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Lady Growlhund and her bodyguard come out. She makes a subtle threat after some RP, and the rogue lets loose his bow. Nat 20, kills her instantly. <laughs> now my group tends to make optimized characters, so I slightly tweak the bodyguard to be a barbarian. He rages and hits the rogue for another Nat 20, nearly taking all his HP in one go. They all shit bricks and start to run. The strategist of our group was also playing a wizard who slapped this guy's self as the rogue but not before he cast Grease on the stairs. In this time, the other rogue and cleric multiclass tried to take him on and got KO'd. The fireball wizard was already out in the grounds, and the group's melee fighter wasn't in the session. So when the bodyguard came to the top of the stairs, the strategist taunted him about his master dying, leading to him falling down the stairs. 
they'd already got some damage on him, plus damage he received from the fight before, so I rolled that one with him breaking his neck on the landing. <laughs> God bless it. Hey everyone, Brian Von VA back at it again, checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell. So you, yes you listening in, can get notified when we post a brand new video. And of course, as always, make sure to leave a comment down below letting us know what kind of quick thinking moments you guys and gals and non-binary pals have had in a campaign. For any teeth. <laughs>